yes. Welcome, YouTube audience. <laughs> you missed the very beginning of the show, as usual. You need to go to right. Liberty Principal <clears throat> Facebook page and subscribe so you get the first part of the show. And then you can watch it live and you can comment to us and we'll uh, we'll comment back to you. We got we got people joining. We got Martha, the machine. And we got Richard Gurry joining. Gurry? Did I pronounce your name right there, Richard? And of course, we got Larry. Larry! Larry! Worst human, worst human being ever. And of course, we got Mr. Voltrog that has uh, joined us as well. Look at that. Niz, you joined us. Hey! That is fantastic. I'm so glad Look at that, that my co-host could join us. <laughs> Kind of weird. Right on. Uh, I don't know <clears throat> What's what weird is that I don't see any of these people in this in this chat. I don't see anyone. You don't see. I see no one. That says Craig has joined. Larry's joined. Richard's joined. Nope. Martha's nope. joined. You I see, see nothing. That's too bad. Wow. And you actually typed it. You felt. Are you going to do this for the whole show? I or felt compelled. I felt compelled to type it. <laughs> yes. Say it and type it. Right. So tell us a little bit about what what led you to this moment this this, this week's time. adventure this week's adventure in misery and by yeah, yeah, misery that's that's, right. that's, that's is... the misery of niz the misery welcome to this week's misery go ahead <laughs> right right so uh to, today uh i had a i had a job to do um installing electrical service a, in a modular home that had just been put on its foundation. And usually this stuff is pretty easy to do. Uh, we've been doing it for quite a while. And generally, it's like I said, it's pretty cut and dry. It's pretty easy to do. Um, you know, you have to dig a trench. And when we dig a trench, you just use a trencher. You know, generally, it's not shoveling. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Texas. And in Texas, there are two types of soil, as I said before the show, Paul. Sand right. and red clay. There is nothing in between. There is no such thing as dirt. As tell you know, bit, before, before you go any further, tell us you. a little bit about red clay. What what's it like? Uh, it it is it is very tough. It is next to impossible to dig with a shovel. Um, it's like one step down from cement. Pretty so pretty. Have to chisel it out. <laughs> you're you're picking and 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 hammering away at that for quite some time. It is very very tough, very difficult. Uh. Now, I'm assuming uh, at this job that it was more sand than red clay. Oh, no, of course not. No. Absolutely not. What, what, made this, <laughs> what made this particular adventure in misery uh, um, unique was the fact that where this home was built was previously a pig pasture. Well, of course. Right. So you had about eight inches worth of pig shit on top of red clay. Um, well, you, you're going to have that in a piggery. You got to have it. You got to have, have it. So, Otherwise, so it's not generally, a generally we use, it's called a ditch witch. It's like a big freaking chainsaw on tracks for the dirt, for the ground. And usually, man, it doesn't matter if it's sand or if it's red clay. It doesn't matter what it is. That ditch witch will rip it up. Uh, and it's really easy to use. The problem with this particular job is that uh, the, the guys who were in there earlier before us, like the plumbers and the people who did the well, they didn't mark anywhere where their lines went through the yard, so we weren't able to use the ditch witch, which meant uh, digging that sucker by hand. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the crowd, the studio audience. There's your ditch witch. It looks like a, it looks like a pretty nasty-looking machine, man. It's fun to use. I mean, you, it's didn't, you didn't get to use the ditch witch. No, didn't get to no use the ditch witch. for you. Dig that uh, sucker by hand. Uh, so, um, I'm exhausted, to say the least. And uh, nothing, this is one of those things where really nothing went right today. And, uh, of course, now that we're, you know, we're, we're, we're on the show and we're ready to go here, uh, Skype, of course, is acting up now. So, every couple minutes, my camera is dropping out. So, that just adds to my... You got going for me. So, I got that going for me. You got that going. Got that going for me. Great, great movie, man. Caddyshack. <laughs> Uh, two minutes. Uh, I'm well. Ten minutes before the show, you said. Uh, I'm too man, tired for words. I'm too tired <laughs> for words. I'm like, I mean, that's yeah. not what you want two to hear. Minutes. Your co-host. <laughs> two minutes before a show. I'm too a tired. Show on Monday, by the way. I don't know if you. I saw it. that. I saw that. Yeah, I know. That's. I did I did. Yeah, that was another wonderful adventure. Was Monday. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, 
Uh, yeah, Good because look. I asked you if you could co-host, and uh, you could not, which totally you had to. You had to run and drive, and you had to crazy. drive an hour one way to go and pick up my wife's MacBook from Simply Mac, which this is a stupid story, man. She 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 had some problems with her Mac, right? Where the trackpad stopped working. Now this is her her laptop for work. Okay, hold on. So it's Larry has a t- new title for the show. I want to share it. My worst day ever by Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's every day of my life. Don't worry, we're <laughs> my get to the story, Larry. Go ahead. Uh, so, oh, so I. Uh, oh, golly. So <laughs> I. Uh, uh, so Monday, she's she's having some problems with this MacBook, right? So she uh, they have Apple Care and all this kind of crap. So she calls Apple Care and says, "Hey, I'm having problems with this. What should I do? Should I send it into you?" And they said, well, "Great news." You don't have to send it in to us because there's a store. It's an hour away from you. It's called Simply Mac. They are uh, an authorized Mac repair center. We're going to set you up with an appointment. It's going to be for 5 o'clock. Don't be late. If you're more than 10 minutes late, they will cancel your appointment. So we're like, oh, shit, this is going to be cool. We're going to go in. They're going to look at this thing. It's six screws hold the trackpad. Six screws hold the trackpad in. Six screws. Right. So we take it there. We're like, dude, this is going to be great. We're going to drive there. It's going to be like 10 minutes. We're going to be in, out, no problem. Have right? you met you? No. How do you right, have this right, conversation exactly. with should yourself? Have, having met should yourself. have known better. Okay. <laughs> so we get to this store, Simply Mac. Okay. They look at us and they say, uh, well, it's going to be three days before we can look at it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Three days? Apple Care told me that you're just going to poop, pop, 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 pop in and out. I'll be done in like under an hour. Oh, well, they don't really communicate with us. And you might have had an appointment with Apple Care, but they don't really tell us that. So technically, you don't have an appointment. Awesome. It was Super. nuts. Okay. So they have this thing, all right, from the 1st of March till the 20th of March. Right? Or no, I'm sorry, the 19th of March. The 19th, they call us. It better be the 19th. Right, so you lied to me, man. You lied right. to me. No, uh, no, no. It was the nineteenth. <laughs> so after all of this, they call us back like last week, and they say, "Hey, you know what? We're gonna have to send this in to Apple for the six screws." Right, for the six screws. Because it's so the six screws. if if we would have just called Apple Care and said, "No, to heck with Simply Mac. We're just gonna send it right to you," we would have got this thing back. It was nuts, man. Nuts. Then she had some kind of issue with her charger, and they were like, well, we're going to have to open a separate case for that. We are like, not listen, we're just going to call Apple Care. Right. Apple Care is like, great, we're going to send you a new charger. When you get the new one, put the old one in the box, send it back to us, and we're done. It was like, thank God, no more Simply Mac. It's an hour ride one way. Oh, Larry asks. Larry asks a very pertinent question. You want to read it? Read Larry's question. I know it's Can you pay you. Apple Care with Dentacoin? You know what's funny, Larry, about Dentacoin? <laughs> I actually posted this on my Facebook. Wait, wait, on my I Facebook want to make sure page. the audience what? heard it. Oh. Can you pay Apple Care with Dentacoin? <laughs> right. You know what's funny there, Larry, is that I bought some Dentacoin not that long ago. And you know what I did with that Dentacoin? I made a 20% gain. So you can make fun of Dentacoin all you want, but my wallet is 20% fatter because I bought some Dentacoin and then I sold it. So yeah. suck it. You, you, sold the high, you bought the trough and sold the peak. See, that's right how on. you do it, Larry. That's how you roll. Larry Larry tries to make a living just randomly betting on things. <laughs> Larry is the kind of guy who bought Ripple at three dollars. When CNBC was <laughs> well, like everybody face again. When when you know, CNBC it's, it's, was like, everybody, go buy Ripple, it's three dollars. Larry was like, I'm gonna buy Ripple right now. Larry was on it. Like in the beginning of the season last year, he was like, Dallas Cowboys, Super Bowl, $20,000. <laughs> How'd that work out for you, Larry? Well, Larry said the current price of Denticoin. He went and checked. He went and checked the current price right. of Denticoin. That's fine. And that's fine. That's fine. Because you know what? I think, what, what is it? It's down now. Uh, like uh, point zero 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 four three seven. So it's, uh, it's right. less than... Uh, is that like one tenth or four tenths of a penny? A little bit more than four tenths of a penny? Is that what it is? I don't know, Larry. Whatever it is, it's it's tiny. 
It's, it's right, tough. right. But see what happens. What happens in this in in this type of situation is you buy it now when it's down there at uh, at point zero zero four, and then it goes up to like point zero zero nine, and you make a shitload of money. Right. Well, so you make even a, if it's tiny, it's it's if if right. you have ten thousand dollars worth of tiny and tiny doubles, then you have twenty thousand dollars worth of tiny. See, that's that's what I'm works, saying. Larry. You don't right. understand See? the tiny principle. Right. You're, not, right. you're not aware of the tiny principle. Right. Well, you're not getting. Look, I bought. I bought. What was it? Uh, two two weeks ago, everybody was talking about uh, uh, titanium blockchain, and everybody was saying, you know, titanium blockchain is a shit coin, and it's it's tanking, and they're going to do all kinds. They're going to get rid of it, and I was like, oh, this is great. I bought a whole bunch of titanium blockchain, and then it went up two hundred percent. Yeah. I turned like three dollars into like fifty. It was crazy. Oh, you're, rich. you're rich. I'm rich. Dude, I'm rich. I don't rich. even know why you're digging red clay with that kind of cash right. coming in. With that I don't, kind of money. I don't even get that. You must, I'm telling you. You must do it. You must do it to stay close to the people. By the way, it's a pity if you're what if you're listening to the audio version of this show, uh, then then you're missing. When I say angry face, that's when Niz loses his video. And I think it's very fitting that your image is is the trolley guy face, the angry trolley guy face. I think oh, that's somehow is. poetic. With right. that being said, are you ready to get to our first story? Yeah, let's actually do some stuff tonight. Let's <laughs> let's get to our first story. So, well, first off, uh, let me let me let me tell you what what to expect on this show. I think this time we're going to get to all our stories. So, uh, uh, on Newsfire, we're going to meet the road turned Google pirates of Riley. On Skynetter, we're going to talk bad social credit gets you kicked off the bus in China. And on Liberty Tech, we're going to be talking 3D printing homes for the homeless. And by the way, 3D printing, if you had a 3D printer, dude, you could have just 3D printed them screws and not worried about any of this. Just saying. Just putting it out there. 3D printing, one of them key uh i'll say uh self-sustaining self-reliant technologies that is uh emerging today but anyway we'll get to the 3d printing later riley cops demand google hands over private data of anyone near crime scenes that seems reasonable right oh totally i mean it's for the kids it's for the security right. and the safety of of everyone involved I don't know if you guys right. see the see if you're if you're listening on audio you don't see the image but everybody else you see the image there you see the I don't know if you caught that uh, you know you got the little Google image up there and then you got the little Riley police there and the, the little it's a little little pirate ship sailing the pirate seas and it's blue right. for police it, I think it I think it's Fourth covered. Amendment Schmorth Amendment well, privacy schmivacy right yeah <laughs> so. So it, it, it seems that the road pirates of Raleigh, Raleigh how do you say it? Raleigh, Riley, Raleigh, Raleigh, Raleigh. I'm going to say Riley just to tick them off. Nothing against <laughs> the people of Raleigh. I'm just going to say Riley to tick off the road pirates, not the residents of Raleigh. So when I say Riley, I'm pointing it at the road pirates, not you residents. It seems that the road pirates of Riley, North Carolina, would like to extend their pirate lanes to the digital universe. <laughs> so what they're what they're literally demanding is that Google share with them any and all data from any users that are in proximity to a crime scene. So a crime scene takes place and then they go to Google and to say, "Okay, when all the user data, everybody, everybody within a certain range, I don't know specifically what the range is, uh, are they suspects?" Nah, no. No, they're not suspects. Uh, are they are they suspected witnesses? Nah, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, they're not nah, suspected witnesses. But even if they were, but anyway, they're not even suspected witnesses. Are they? Are they suspected associates of suspects? Nah, nah, nah. nah. I mean, they're near a crime scene. You know, I mean, they could have been sleeping when the crime scene happened. Still, get, give us all their data. Tell us like where they. You know, what were they doing on Google, YouTube? Whatever, Facebook, anything, any information you can give us, just just give us all that data, uh, so you know we can we can determine if if a crime took place. I mean, this isn't a fishing expedition. You know what I'm saying? Nah, they're, they're not going to use nah. it. Let me. Can I read you? Can I read you something? 
Can I read you something? Well, yeah. Wait, is it a bedtime story? Or is it the I think you're fro, though. bedtime story? The I right froze. of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall be is, shall issue, but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and persons or things to be seized. How's that working out for you in Raleigh? In Riley. That's like a, I mean, the words and the language there, it's like, it, as you were reading it, I personally had a desire to invade your privacy and to, you know, unreasonably search and seizure you. But because I heard those words, it was like an instant paralytic effect took a hold of me. And it was like, cannot break words I wonder, on paper. <laughs> I wonder if if I wonder if it's applicable. You know how like you know how like uh, the leftists say, well, well, the Second Amendment only applies to guns they had in 1776. I wonder if that, that applies to the Fourth Amendment as well. That like it only you know like if your house isn't built out of like mud and straw. That is so racist of you to assume that everyone in the 1700s only had houses built of mud and straw. How primitivist, how elitist, how how 21st century centric you are. I am embarrassed for you. I personally, I'm thinking to myself, that's one of those moments that when people go through all of our videos and try to catch the things that we said that were inappropriate, that's going to be one of those moments for you. Are you there? Oh no. I don't know that it looked like it looks like maybe this moto Oh my, I lost him. I totally lost him. Let me try to call him back and while I call him back, uh, I'll I'll continue with the uh, story here. And when he joins, he'll just have to take in the part of the story that he missed through osmosis. He's very good at osmosis. So. Oh, now he's calling me. This is awesome. This is a uh, bad luck biscuit. Hey, welcome to the bad luck biscuit show featuring the one. Hey, trueness. You what know, happened? I think the whole live stream went the down. One trueness. <laughs> what what just happened? I think the whole live stream went down. Claim that title after this. I have no video from you now. I'm here. There's no, there's no video on your end. All I see that's, is the uh, stay awake icon. Well, the important and, thing is that in the live version. There is video. I am waving my hands in the air <laughs> like I just don't care. If you guys oh, are listening this? only on audio, you're you're truly missing a treat. You're missing a visual treat. This is madness. Uh, this this is this is kind of. Uh, I'm waiting for Donald Trump to arrive and to declare that uh, this particular episode is the part of my French. The shithole of His Daily Wednesday. <laughs> right, right, right. It's a shithole uh, of His Daily Wednesday. This is what you get. This is what you get. Not that His Daily Wednesday is a shithole. Just just this particular episode <laughs> might very well be. And Audrey says she can see both of us. And if Audrey well, can see good. us, that's all that matters. And uh, Larry says it's like watching chimps introduced to technology. <laughs> Hilarity ensues. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you Skype. <laughs> Video froze. <laughs> I'm Something like moments that. away from throwing my own feces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, just don't do it on camera. So uh, it's unclear whether the road and now Google Pirates of, uh, of Riley, North Carolina, will be successful in finding the right judges to use ghosts in the language to find some justification for a violation of the Fourth Amendment, which, as Niz pointed out, per supposedly protects citizens from unreasonable search and seizure. And, and I just want to say that the, the fact that people who have been given the power of life and death over you in Riley, 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 the people who are authorized to use deadly force against you if they determine that their lives are, quote, threatened that that these are the people that think it's reasonable for them to get your personal information merely because you happen to be in close proximity to a crime scene 
I think for me reveals the true authoritarian and out of control nature of whoever is running the road pirate and now Google pirate department of Raleigh, North Carolina. And if you live in Raleigh, if you live in Raleigh or Riley, if, if they're doing it there too, and you're not demanding that whoever is behind this decision to attempt to make anyone and everyone suspects of crimes, then then I'm going to just say that you have become extremely inured to your cages. And some might even say that uh, Mustockholm Syndrome uh, is super, super duper strong with you. So did you... So what do you... Born? Go ahead. So what do you think? What do you think? What do you think the odds are um, that if they gather this data... And let's say they, you know, they they find someone who messaged their buddy on Facebook and said, "Hey, yo, you holding? Looking for an eighth? Oh. What do you think the odds are they're gonna go after that guy and be like, yeah, I know somebody shot up the liquor store, but we're going after Joey over there because he was looking for an eighth? Or how about f the police? I'm keeping my guns. <laughs> okay. Or, or 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 how about? I mean, I wouldn't say this, but. But it could could come to this or or how about uh you know I, I i i don't care about them homosexuals i do not like them homosexuals i don't know where this will go it could you know whatever is unaccepted thought that they happen to catch what do you think they're going to do with it this, this isn't dangerous at all this is no Everything's fine. This is fine. I'm fine. We're right. all fine. This is hey, look, man, if you don't have anything to hide, then you've got nothing to fear. Right. So this story to me, one of the reasons why I started off with this story is, as, as everybody knows, there's this huge, huge, it's a cultural push to create this anti-gun uh, climate. And... Uh, it seems that the the potential allies for me, as far as people authentically pushing back against this uh, anti-gun cultural crap, they have an unhealthy relationship with the people who will enforce whatever crap this anti-gun culture manages to push <laughs> through the paper pushers and the... The, the halls of legislatures across the land. I like These I like Larry's guys. response. I like Larry's response. What's canvassing Larry's a crime response? scene. Canvassing a crime scene takes quite some time. If you could just take people's pedigree and move on, it streamlines things immediately. What's like like I said before, it, 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 here's exactly what this means. He is basically saying what I said before facetiously in jest when I said, Privacy, schmivacy, Fourth Amendment, Schmorth Amendment. Right. This is basically what. Thanks, Larry. You just used the word salad to say privacy, schmivacy. I don't know what what pedigree is, but I'm sure it's some sort of technical state of on state face control operational thing. Uh, but Larry, literally the worst human being on the face of the planet, and he knows it. Well, he knows that I think it. Uh, but he's a fine example of exactly what I'm talking about. He has. I have. I'm. I'm going to say a rather. Un I'm not. I'm not telling conservatives. You know, join the party and you know, join the F police. F the police party. You know, F FTP man. FTP. I I'm just saying. Maybe step back. Take a break from. You know, get 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 the thin blue line haze out of your eyes, and maybe just take a couple steps back and and maybe look at them with a little bit more. Uh, just 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 maybe a little bit more discernment because at the end of the day all of the stuff that these people are doing they're doing this march on saturday this march for life now it's a it's a march for the advancement of the cattle car guy culture it's what it really is uh none of this means Isn't that name or wasn't that name already taken the march for life isn't that like a pro-life yeah march yeah, they haven't yeah. Yeah. So they just yeah. like decided that they were gonna. They just decided gonna that they would usurp life. that name. When it's 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 not a march for life. It's a march for state control. It's uh, uh, John. You're gonna have to tell me what that A cap thing is, John Smith. I've seen all it. cops I'm are like, bastards. Okay, what the heck are you guys talking about with that A cap? It's it's, it's it's all cops are bastards. 
Oh, okay. Okay, there you go. So, yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm not I'm not going around to conservatives and screaming, cops are terrible. And <laughs> right, no, right. I mean, I don't like the institution of policing. I'll just say that. But uh, all I'm saying to conservatives is these are the folks that 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 put to power the 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 screeching of the the little youth supremacists out there. They're the right. ones, the very people that you will close ranks on to protect. You will ostracize. You will you will attempt to destroy people's lives. I've seen it personally happen, uh, and even to some people that I know and love. Uh, I've seen them close ranks. Don't you dare question policing. The thin blue line, don't you dare question the military. I'm not even asking you to reject the police or reject the military. I'm just saying look at them with a little bit more critical eye because these folks are absolutely the only ones that make the screeching of the of the youth supremacist cattle car guide enabling police state uh, utopian dreamers. Uh, they're the only ones that, that, that make their fantasies come true. That's it. So, yeah, maybe maybe challenge the institution of policing just a little bit. Maybe maybe just a little bit. You know, I'm I've been thinking about this and, you know, I, I'm wondering. Tell me if you think this is a good idea. It would be neat if you had a map. Uh, you can go on and you can go into your area, you know, go anywhere in the country and you can you can like click on a police department and find out that that police department sign a pledge to not confiscate guns. Find out where you live. Find out who, who are these police officers and uh, have they agreed to not confiscate guns? I mean, <laughs> that would be far more of an effective tr uh, check against uh, the, the youth supremacists and their uh, police state right, the Clinton youth. enablers <clears throat> than voting, than calling for more or less legislation just just make sure you know what kind of world do you live in what where, are, are you surrounded by police departments that would refuse to sign a pledge that says we're not going to confiscate guns by the way I, I have a feeling you're not going to get nearly as many police departments to sign that pledge as you think you will at any rate you have anything more to say on this we can put it to bed i think we it's it i think bed. it's uh i think it's crazy I think people should be really, really um, um, concerned uh, about what's going on, especially in Raleigh. And, and the thing is, is that once this, if this takes hold and they're allowed to do this in North Carolina, it's going to spread. Uh, more and more police departments are going to start doing this, and uh, it's definitely not a good thing for your privacy. Everyone is so concerned right now, uh, Facebook privacy, uh, because of the, uh, what is it, what was that... Uh, I don't know, Captiva Analytical or something. What the heck was that thing called? Oh, I know who you mean. That uh, um, whatever Analytica, whatever. Right, what right. So everybody's all concerned about this data, this this quote unquote data leak from Facebook that uh, supposedly uh, leaked all your personal information all over the place to all these different companies and uh, political campaigns and yada yada yada. This is so much worse. This is so much worse, and if you're not concerned about this, then, uh, yeah, you're a Stockholm Syndrome potato head. Yeah, <laughs> full-on Stockholm Syndrome potato head. Now, speaking of potatoes, let's move on to China, because this is, we're in the Skynetter section of the show, and that's where we look at uh, dystopian tech. And uh, don't worry, folks, if you're listening to this, we do have Liberty Tech coming at the end, so... We got hopeful stuff at the end, and hopefully, even on this story, I offered at least some hope. There is, There are solutions out there that don't require you to become voters or rely on Congress members. It's, uh, you know, make, make, make it visible to your community who is willing to do what. And uh, I, I think that's a good place to start. <coughs> anyway, let's, let's get on to uh, the Skynetter part of the show. I'm not going to play the bumps. I don't feel like playing the bumps right now. I'm not playing the bumps, dude. I'm not going to play the bumps. Should I play right, the Right. What could go wrong? <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway. what? You know what? I'm going to play the bump just for fun. 
Here you go. Is it only a matter of time before the robots enslave us all and turn us into factories that supply the lubrication for their moving parts? Well, maybe it's just around the corner. Skynet covers stories of dystopian tech for the walls and for the pondering. Yeah. So, I don't know if you heard. Did you hear that? Yes, absolutely. Oh, good. So you heard, <laughs> you heard what we're becoming. It's a real cheerful segment, but uh, hopefully we can have fun with it too. <laughs> I don't know how fun we're going to have with this story. China <laughs> uses social credit to determine if you can use public transportation. Isn't that cool? There. Except <laughs> it's China's version of a no-fly list. Except. <laughs> Up, up a whole other level because now it's not just right. that you're on some terror watch list it's uh you know you did bad things on social media i can guarantee you if i was in china i'd be on the bad boy list and i'd be riding time, a bike everywhere yeah oh yeah man i, mean, I would I'd, have I'd the be... biggest my calves would be the boss because <laughs> i'd be riding a bike everywhere yeah i'd be fit I'd be fit. You know what? I right. think you stumbled upon Physically. something. This is like Physically. a secret way to force dissidents and uh, <laughs> uh, I'll say diverse thinkers into becoming fit. Right, right. <laughs> you, you you want this to happen. See, it's, uh, you know, it's y- y- the law of unintended consequences works in many ways. And I mean, sure, it's, this good, sounds for the earth. it's good for the earth. <laughs> It's good for the earth and it's good for my calves. So China, <laughs> China has been. By the way, I see your little guy again. You want to switch oh, the video back? <laughs> Golly! <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Right now we're seeing an ad. Okay, we saw an ad. Uh, Skype got a free <laughs> ad on my show. <laughs> anyway, right. right. I want my cut, Skype. I want my cut. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. Today's mortgage right. rate three point seven. What is that? Uh, that lending <laughs> yeah. tree. You owe yeah. me money. <laughs> Freaking lending tree, man. I want my cut. So China has become the world's leader in dystopian tech, uh, deploying artificial intelligence to enable its police state enforcers to more effectively target and eliminate dissent. And we covered the story of how it has a whole nation as a police state laboratory in right. dystopian tech, and that is the, the Wiggers. So it's now utilizing your social media presence to determine your social credit. I think somebody said this is like a Black Mirror episode. If I'm, I was no, actually I going to bring that up. Yeah, I, I've never watched Black Mirror. Well, if you want to watch this exact episode on Netflix, it is uh, season three, episode one. Okay, so season three, episode one, that's the story that we're covering. But we're covering it like it's real news because it is. (laughs) (laughs) Right, it is. If you score too low, you begin losing access to certain services. And here the the Chinese government has announced that people with low social credit won't be able to ride on trains or fly on planes starting in April. This is from Reuters. You want to read the Reuters thing? You have the story yet? Oh, uh, let's see here. I will read Reuters. Do it. Do it. I will read Reuters. I know you can read China it. said it will begin applying its so-called social credit system to flights and trains and to stop people who have committed misdeeds from taking such transport for up to a year. People who would be put into uh, <clears throat> on the restricted list include those found to have committed acts like spreading false information about terrorism and causing trouble on flights, as well as those who used expired tickets or smoked on trains. It's according to two statements issued on the National Development and Reform Commission website on Friday. Love that title. Those found to have committed financial wrongdoings, such as employers who failed to pay social insurance or people who have failed to pay fines, would also face these restrictions, according to statements that were dated March 2nd. It added that rules will come into effect on May 1st. I guess they don't waste any time in China. Uh, This move is in line with President Xi Jinping's plan to construct a social credit system based on the principle of once untrustworthy, always Always restricted. Uh, it's according to one of the one of the notices that was signed by eight ministries, including the country's aviation regulator and the Supreme 
People's Court. I wonder if the Supreme Judge People's Wap- Court. Is, is Judge Wapner on that court? I think he's dead, <laughs> dude. But I want to go back <laughs> to that whole National Development and Reform Commission. That is some hot yeah. stuff right there. That is, I don't know why yeah. we don't have a national development and reform. Right. Don't say that too late. You know that there are Republicans and Democrats right now that would salivate. Oh my gosh, over a yes. Neat you little know, name I, like that. And by the way, Donnie Boy, he 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 recently congratulated, I think. Uh, no, you're going to say the Putin thing. I'm not talking about him congratulating Putin. You know, because Obama congratulated Putin too. But moral outrage, selective, let's do that. But. Yeah. He congratulated China's president on becoming president for life, and uh, uh, and maybe he was kidding. I didn't see the clip, so maybe he was. It kidding. was facetious, know, but but he said he did that uh, facetiously. Did he do it facetiously? Maybe it, it be, yeah. Well, no, know, it was it was facetious. Life, you know, not about no, you know, dude. If you had president for life in America, you'd you'd get a lot of assassinated presidents. I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean. Maybe at some point somebody would be able to consolidate power right now, but uh, as it is right now, politics in America is already a blood sport. I can't imagine what it would be like if uh, the winning party got the president for life. That would be that'd be fun. That'd be fun to watch. Maybe. But shake it up a little. Yeah, <laughs> shake it up a little. Uh, so uh, They'd have to make them go through an obstacle course like American Ninja. You ever watch that show? I have not. Oh, John Smith said that I have to watch Black Mirror. John Smith, you are not the boss of me. Uh, uh, don't don't infringe on my anarchies like that and try to suggest. Even a suggestion that I watch something is statist, okay? And, of course, Larry says the policy makes sense. <laughs> Of course. Larry Cousins. Of course, worst because Larry would ever. be flying first class for free forever. Pretty much worse. You know, pretty much because Larry watches a lot of our shows and comments, and, and I'm happy he does. Uh, uh, Larry has, he's kind of becoming the villain of his daily. He's like the, his daily nemesis. He's like, I mean, everybody needs, I know, nemesis. You know, he's good for the show, though. It pulls the show along. We got, we got our nemesis, Larry Cousins. Well, Larry Cousins, our evil nemesis, show up and uh, poop all over our Liberty stuff. And hopefully he will, because if he doesn't show up, I'm assuming he's dead. Cause if we, we would, honestly, we would, we would miss you, Larry. We would. We would. I we would. would truly, truly miss you. We would. I would. I would. I would genuinely miss him. So let's 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 get on to something good now, dude. Are you ready for the good? We let's, we we let's we, we, we talk good. some smackles, and and who knows? Maybe we'll get to a couple good stories. It would be, maybe we can, because I got a couple of Liberty Tech stories here. I'm gonna I'm gonna play. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna play the Liberty, the Liberty. If I can find it here, where is it? Oh, there it is. Are you ready for the Liberty Tech bump? Let's do this. Are coercive associations being outmoded by technology? On Liberty Tech, we cover stories of emerging tech that suggest the days of coercive associations, even large-scale centralized operations, may be numbered. Yeah, best part of the show right here, Liberty Tech. Now, if you go to iState.tv, we have a number of stories and, you know, kind of the first two part for this show are kind of in the awareness category. This is more in the hope and action categories. Uh, it's good to understand the reality of power around you, but don't, you, you don't need to be frozen in time by the reality of power around you because it doesn't always have to stay that way. And there's a lot of really great things going on out in the world today, things that you can actually take advantage of and begin to build your own liberty right where you're at and to help enable others to do the same. Because I honestly, I've said this many times and I'll say it over and over and over again, the the most effective path, I believe, to seeing the diminishment and eventual uh, disillusion of the coercive enterprise is is simply to render it obsolete. People will listen to your ideas after they see your ideas demonstrated in ways that benefit their lives. And technology is one of the key areas that we have these opportunities. And here's a great story that illustrates just that. 3D printed homes help families in need in El Salvador. So... There's this uh, nonprofit company that uh, got together with a 
a, a robot company, a 3D printed robot company, 3D printing robot company. Uh, and they and they, they came together to build homes for families in need in El Salvador. And they're working on, no, they already are building 3D printed homes. Right now they're costing about $10,000. And they're working on scaling it down, improving how they're doing things. To, and they believe they can get the price down to four thousand dollars. So for four thousand dollars, they're be they're they're able to build. I mean, it's a bit of a no frills home, but it's a home. It's certainly better than living in a tent city and living right. living with you know corrugated. It's a roof metal over your head. Or, yeah, it's a solid roof over your head, and it's a solid home because it's built out of concrete. And the name of the nonprofit company is New Story, and the name of the 3D printed home company is Icon, which is a Texas-based company. Now I'm going to yep. play a little bit of this video. I don't know if you're going to hear it. Uh, I guess I'll find out once I play it. Uh, let me know if you hear. We lost your image there, News. Uh, Golly! But anyway, let me let me go to where hmm. you could hear this. Hold on. Here we go. All right, now let's see if this thing plays. At, at least I want you to just see what this looks like. There's, oh, there's a brief. Locally grown and family and we have a commercial I can hear here. It. Let me let me nu nuke the commercial or uh, this commercial for Sun Nursery. So when the Sun Nursery's commercial is uh, over, then I will I will play the video. Their advertisement ends at zero. Here you go. There you get a sense of what the the, the place looks, looks like. like a cool house. Uh, yeah. Can you hear that, that, Niz? It's more yes. Than that. This is, okay. This is, this I don't know if our audience can hear it, but they're looking the at the States. building. Loomis, and you know what? I'm just going to pause it because I really just want you to see what it looks like. And if you're listening on audio, you would see how they are arranging uh, this building. And uh, and, and this uh, this 3D printer is going around and building this building. And they, and they can build these homes in one day. So I won't play any more of that, but... Uh, uh, yeah, it's yeah, like a little bit. It's it's like a it's like a tiny home and a half. Yeah, it's like a tiny home and a half. Uh, but it's awesome. Honestly, if I was like twenty five years old and I didn't have, well, if I was in my early twenties and I didn't have any kids and wasn't married, I think I I would love a little home like that. I actually really like tiny homes. By the way, I I I think I would enjoy living in a tiny home. But my wife and I are not similarly aligned. She actually wants a bigger home, and I would love to just live in a tiny home. And maybe I would have a shed where I'd have my studio. <laughs> <laughs> I'd live in the cool. tiny home. Be like real simple. It'd be great. I was like, you know, you live in a tiny home. It's like, I'm sorry, man, can't have you come over. Tiny home. <laughs> not enough room. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> my little my little isolationist ways would be satisfied. It'd be great. I, I shouldn't be such an isolationist that I am, but uh, there you have it. So uh, this is uh, Brett Hagler, the co-founder of the nonprofit of New Stories, saying we get a we get a large piece of land and work with families that have been living in shacks or tents without shelter and design a totally new community with the families. Approximately, I mean, you just you, you know you see a problem, you solve a problem. He's not running off to governments to try to fix it he's doing it himself and he's using technology in a powerful way and i don't know what they plan on doing this but in doing this work they're going to be able to perfect a model that i am sure they're going to be able to sell it it won't be just uh, for for families in need i could see a lot of uses for this so uh so then evan loomis comes in and he's the co-founder of of icon which is based in austin texas and he says this is a gigantic robot. It really does some amazing things. Thank you for that. Down to the millimeter, it knows exactly where to place uh, materials. In this case, that material is a proprietary mixture of concrete that pours out of a nozzle on the underside of the metalwork, and the machine moves along a computerized map to create a house. This is basically the first permitted. Now, that's the that's the big yeah, that that's a loaded term there in and of itself. Mm. The advancement of technology and uh, liberty enabling tools is always coming flat off uh, or f hard hard against the uh, regulations uh, around us. But anyway, they managed to basically create the first permitted 3D right. printed houses mm. 
in the United States. He said, we have to invest in research and design. Hagler said, we ask ourselves, how do we get a breakthrough in cost, speed, and quality? And that's how we landed upon 3D home printing. The excitement in the air is palpable as they walk us through and around this modest home built up of about uh, 100 one-inch thick concrete layers. It's stronger than regular cinder block. Well, I'm not going to read more, but uh, what do you think? You excited? They got their permission slip. They got their permission slip. And, yeah. you know, that's the downside to the story. That's the reality that we live in. And you know, whether, you know, the degree to which you should go get permission slips or the degree to which you should just kind of take a liberty market approach. By the way, that's my thing. I don't call them black markets. I call them liberty markets. They're the only actual authentic markets that I recognize. Not that I can live in black markets or liberty markets regularly, but... Yeah, that's that's where most people who who want to see the balance of power tilt towards individuals and free associations should be working towards. But they are working on getting this down from ten thousand to four thousand dollars. I mean, <laughs> and that's just incredible. I mean, th- that's this, amazing. This type of technology is emerging everywhere. Hold on one second here. I almost almost lost something there, but I saved it. So I'm going to go to another story. I'm going to go to another liberty story. We got time. Well, I'll let you pick. We got. Uh, I'll let the. How about we let the studio audience pick? Here's our choice. Yeah, let's do that. We got breakthrough in qubits could lead to mass production of quantum processors. Nikon developing self-repairing 3D printer. New Zealand launches first ever flying taxi service. Stars deliver drugs to cells at the nanoscale. Living in constructed cells fused to make mini chemical factories and nanoparticle can track and kill breast tumors. What would you choose there? What would you he- choose? Are you asking uh, me that question? Or it's the... a photo mat. Yeah, it's about the size of a photo mat. Yeah. Yeah, it's maybe a little bigger, but yeah. That's still it's it's a it's a it's a great it's a man, it's a major, major step up. So uh I'm gonna give you guys uh ten five seconds here. And if I get nobody responding, then Niz, you're going to pick the story. So we're hey, going to... hey, wow! I just realized I'm still on the website, so I got that infinite regress. Wow! Nice. I created a bit of that infinite regress. That's uh, Audrey uh-huh. picked nano killing breast cancer. Ooh, that's where we're going to go. We're going to go to the nanoparticle can track and kill breast tumors you you want to read this one yeah uh let's see here let me uh get this thing open here uh polymer nanoparticle shows ability to locate and treat breast tumors uh researchers have developed a fluorescing nanoparticle capable capable of finding tumors lighting up upon arrival and being activated with light to generate heat and destroy cancer cells that's pretty awesome. It is. So basically, it's like a tumor-seeking missile, yeah. and uh, it uh, it goes in there, and once it locates a a, a, a cancerous cell, it uh, it fluoresces. Uh, they're able to see that, and then they can uh, activate that with light, and it generates heat, and it obliterates the cancer cell. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it's incredibly targeted treatment that doesn't damage all the cells around it. That's the yeah, thing. that's cool. You know, uh, this therapy uh, is kind of blast everything. We got chemotherapy, chemotherapy is freaking that's terrible. Right. Chemotherapy, right. right? Chemotherapy is uh, is is terrible. It's uh, I don't know. I don't know. Have you ever known anyone who's gone through chemotherapy or witnessed someone go yeah. through it? Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely horrendous. I mean, you, it makes you wonder what's worse. You know, is the is the cancer worse or is the treatment worse? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm... Larry says. I wonder if this. I don't know what that means. Plugs. I wonder oh, if he, this. He, uh, he chose it... the plugs, whatever that is. Hmm. Go ahead. Okay. I wonder if this uh, can be used for other forms of cancer. Well, he says an unexpected result was how efficiently the nanoparticles localized to the tumors without any targeting agent. Uh, the, said the study's lead author, Dr. Nikolai Nicole, oh, Dr. Nicole Levy Polyachenko. 
uh, it's the Russians. What's that? It's the Russians. The freaking Russians, man. Achieving high enough levels of HDAPs, whatever that is, within the tumor to allow it to be seen provides an advantage for knowing exactly where light should be applied to generate heat and kill the cancer cells. I don't know uh, how else the, this this can be applied, but I'm sure that uh, I'm sure it'll have multiple applications. And I see, see the stuff. I you go to iStake.tv, you're gonna see these types of stories. You're gonna see like there's there's a lot of good news. I don't know how often I repeat that in shows, but I feel like I really need to repeat that because it's so easy to get uh, avalanched with 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 the crazy crap that's going on out there while there's there's all kinds of uh, exciting stuff going on out there. Like, you got... Uh, on, on the same kind of theme, I'm going to go to Stars Deliver Drugs to Cells at the NAMI. That's actually the one I was going to pick. Okay, well then go ahead and read I it. Would, if I would have gotten to pick... Well, I can't read it now because I closed the page. Well, that's a... Why, you're a terrible human being. Why would you do that? I know. I don't, it was an accident. Terrible. All right, whatever. So uh, nanoparticles in the shape of stars have been designed to enter into specific cells of the body. Only after entering the, entering the cells do these star-shaped nanoparticles deliver their payloads, therapeutic medicines. And this is from phys.org. Uh, A-star researchers, that's A asterisk star, that's... that's you know what? Let me let me show you what this looks like because it's a particular spelling. I don't know if you could see it there. If you're if you're listening rather than watching, you don't see it. it's capital A asterisk and then capital S T A R. So A star researchers uh, have developed nanoscale drug delivery particles that can sense their surroundings and release their payload only after entering a cell, a discovery that could make many existing medicines more effective. The new nanoparticles developed by uh, Zibiao Li from the ASTAR Institute of Materials Research and Long Titles are a significant upgrade <laughs> from previous generations of polymer-based drug delivery nanoparticles. Early examples typically consisted of simple polymer chains with a polar hydrophilic head and a non-polar hydrophobic tail. Wow, that's hydrophobic. Wow. I don't know what that's yeah, about. Geez. That seems racist. Golly. Uh, I know. I, it's <laughs> racist. And you water, know you these know chains naturally aggregate into spheres with their hydrophobic tails. There you go again with that racism. All pointing inward to form a nonpolar core. The core formed a good site for drug molecules to nestle in the bloodstream. However, these aggregates tended to be torn apart. We'll get to the end here. The greatest challenge in making the nanoparticle was to integrate different synthetic methodologies into one macromolecular design. At one of the ends of each Y shaped branch, the team attached a temperature sensitive polymer called called uh, PNIPAM, PNIPOM, PNIPOM. At room temperatures, the PNIPOM polymer extends outward but collapses once body temperature, 30 to 7 degrees Celsius, is reached, allowing the nanoparticles drug molecules cargo to escape. That's pretty awesome, man. Oh. Yeah, you know, you know what this makes me wonder is if this could be something that could be used um, in conjunction with uh, pain medications. I mean, could this possibly be the answer to the opioid crisis? It, it certainly would be one of them because you could deliver, uh, instead of having to you know, medicate the whole body, so to speak, you could, uh, again, deliver medicines in a much more targeted way. So you might not need nearly as many of the medicines to reach the cells that need the therapeutic treatment. I don't know. I don't know the science behind that, but we have reached the end of our show. And uh, hopefully we're leaving you guys with uh, you know, some hope and optimism. And uh, I, I strongly, if you don't know much about 3D printing, since that was our first story, I strongly suggest you get very familiar with 3D printing. It's developing 
in 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 rapid stages and it's it's just a matter of time like how we started off the show niz was talking about how need those six screws these are i'm i'm assuming these are very specially specialty screws of a a a uh, a dimension that is not commonly found so they had to send away for the screws so if you have a 3d printer in your home all you need is a design you just print the screws and then that's that so right there we go do you have any any, any last things to say well well why don't you why don't you hawk your wares dude pitch your stuff. i'm not gonna do any plugs tonight because i'm why too not? tired I'm too tired for plugs me? too tired for plugs Wow, I spent the day plug? laying on the ground in pig shit. <laughs> I'm not doing plugs Great show, tonight. guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Martha. Martha is the machine, by the way, everybody. I can Say 3D print machine. dirt to dig through. Thanks, Larry. Yeah. Thanks for that, Larry. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> That's a good idea. You could right. 3D print a field of red clay and then dig through it. Right. That's see. Right. That's, or that's the power of 3d you know printing. i could also 3d print a poo parcel and mail it to larry yay <laughs> that might be a better use uh, uh well well you're doing your show this friday right you're doing the uh, torture yes. report on uh, yes the, the torture liberty report on, uh, on the liberty radio network on lrn.fm as always as always, but there's another show that 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 you've been doing. There is, and I've just I've been I actually missed uh, the last, the last two, two weeks, weeks of that show. Last I two noticed. weeks, I had to I shake noticed. my head to give a finger wag. You know what sucks the worst is that I had shows written for those days. Um, it didn't happen. <clears throat> no, it's just more misery. Actually, more you know misery. you know why I didn't tell you this story. This is a story that you haven't heard yet. Okay. okay? When we purchased our house, we purchased our home, in the backyard is a, I guess you could call it, it looks like a FEMA trailer. It's not white, it's painted blue. But it's about the same size uh, as a FEMA trailer. And uh, originally, we were going to turn it into an office. And then some things happened, and uh, we decided no longer to turn it into an office. And it's kind of just been sitting there idle for the last three years. So I walked out taking the dog out in the yard and looked in the window and noticed there's a whole bunch of insulation hanging from the ceiling. And I thought to myself, gee, self, oh, good. that doesn't look too good. Maybe I should open the door and take a peek in there. Well, I probably should have taken a peek in there a long time ago. Well, there's uh, there was a leak in the roof oh. and it had spread ridiculously and uh, the roof is now collapsing and caving in. And uh, needless to say, it needs to be torn down. So, uh, Saturday, I Watch put an ad. I put an ad on Craigslist, right? And uh, I said, "This thing is free." Now, here's the here's the catch: you can't take it out of my back. My backyard. Your I'm video, a border terrian. Give us your video back. I'm a border terrian. <laughs> I guess you could say a home border. It will not do it. It's not allowing oh, wow. me to give you back. <laughs> Well, we're near Skype the is the saying show. no, so you're Skype just going to have to watch this advertisement H for organic milk. <laughs> That's so, all you're going to have to watch this advertisement for organic milk. I put an ad on Craigslist, and I said, this is free. Just take it. It needs to go for scrap. And uh, uh, you can't get this thing out. You can't wheel it out. My, my backyard has like a 10, well, 12-foot corrugated metal fence around the entire backyard. So you're not getting in my backyard. At all, okay. ever, period. And uh, so I had like a gazillion people calling me uh, to, to come and get this thing. Everybody wanted to know, is it livable? Now, I put pictures on Craigslist. Was, there should be no question as to whether it's livable or not. Okay, it's number not one. Number two, I also said, I have like a giant freaking walking dead fence around my backyard, so you're not wheeling this thing out of here. Uh, but I did actually, I, I did find a guy that he came out, started taking it down, and uh, he's going to take it for scrap. And uh, so it is starting to come down. So that's why my, I had no show on Sunday. It was because of a little bit of demolition. A little, little so better luck is. biscuits. Little, right. Hey, so we got we got uh, Nisery at the beginning and Nisery at the, sen, at the end. So we at kind end, of right. a Nisery sandwich. Right, right, exactly. It's right. wonderful. All you folks in the you middle, you're all just part of a misery sandwich. Okay. 
And on that note, I will be back tomorrow on my Facebook page, the Paul Gordon Facebook page, for headlines you may have missed at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then tomorrow night is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander from the Freedom Fiends. We will be on tomorrow night. And I also want to just say to everyone, I'll say this to my Niz and everybody else, next week is going to be the last round of shows before my my Easter hiatus. So during that week, there will be no shows. No, no is dailies. No headlines you may have missed. There won't be content on iState.tv. It's going to be a blackout week for Paul as I go through one of my introspection reanalysis and figure out, hey, you're back. I'm hey, on the different camera, the big camera. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> oh, you're up close. <laughs> it's the close-up cam. I don't know if I like the close-up version of this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you even notice that I'm shaved? Oh, did you yeah. even notice? That you're shaved? Yeah, don't you remember I said you should shave your eyebrows off? You look like powder. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, Larry says Jeff is the most normal member of Paul's whack pack. <laughs> oh, thank, whack pack now. Thanks, apparently. thanks, Larry. Thanks, Larry. Uh, that means a lot. That's a that's a huge compliment. <laughs> that that's means a, a lot. Fantastic, yeah. huge compliment. <laughs> and, and with that note, I'm gonna I'm gonna bid you guys adieu. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on his daily Wednesday, especially to the folks who took the time to comment. I really enjoy the comments, and I like reacting to the comments. So good night, everybody. Have a great, have a great rest of your day. Have a great rest of your evening. Have a great rest of your morning. You know, I should probably steal my daughter. My daughter used to have uh, a sign-off on her video channel, and I should adapt it because she decided to get rid of it. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great rest of your month. Have a great rest of your year. And have a great rest of your life. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good night, All the bases. <laughs>